going to expose the facts in these crimes that you do against black people. New York State is now the capital of racial violence. We are not going to let this girl be the scapegoat of a corrupt system. We want to show the world how low down, dogged, and callous the state of New York yes. is. The media now has, has released that Tawana identified Chris. We have the facts and the evidence that an assistant district attorney and a state trooper did this. We closed the bridge, the court, and this building, and Main Street. That was Al Sharpton 25 years ago in one of the cases that cemented him as a local and national figure, the Tawana Brawley case. Brawley, then a 15-year-old, claimed to have been kidnapped and raped by six white men repeatedly, found with a KKK uh, basically sketched across her chest, racial epithet on her stomach, and feces in her hair. Brawley later claimed her attackers included two law enforcement officials, among them an assistant DA named Stephen Pagonis. The case heavily covered. I remember doing this and also the defamation suit after it. It came after other racially divisive incidents in the city and further split New Yorkers often along racial lines, including scores of protests and demonstrations. Problem is, Brawley, as we learned, was completely making this up. She made up the story to avoid reportedly a beating at home after running off with her boyfriend. Pagonis later sued Brawley's team, Sharpton and lawyers, Vernon C. Vernon Mason, Alton Maddox for defamation, won 35 grand in damages, but Sharpton never to this day apologized. Brawley now reportedly lives in Virginia, working under an assumed name as a nurse. Meanwhile, Sharpton, presidential candidate in 04, become uh, among the nation's highest profile activists when it comes for African American issues and now hosts a nightly program on MSNBC. Okay, Dominic, set the stage here a little bit when this happened, what the climate was like, because I think people forget this case didn't happen in isolation. Richard, uh, good question, and, and it's important that we do set that climate because at that time it was very ugly in New York City. The national shows, uh, Sam Donaldson, the type. The headlines were, is New York the new South? That's how, I'm not talking about Tawana Brawley right now. We know what, what's concluded in that case. I'm talking about the climate. It was Wait, very, Howard very Beach, ugly. Right, you, had, you had Eleanor Bumpers, mm -hmm. African-American grandmother, uh, shot by a police officer. The officer, she had a knife apparently during an eviction. Eleanor Bumpers, Bern, Bernard Getz, the four black youth shot subway. in the subway. Uh, uh, Howard Beach, Yousef Hawkins in, in Bensonhurst. I can go on and on and on and on. It was really, really ugly. So then into this void came this case. Um, and I just remember from both the original and then in the defamation suit, what really struck me was the language used um, that she, uh, Sharpton wouldn't even let her even talk here to the attorney general in New York State here because he said it was the equivalent of someone having to talk to Hitler. Um, I mean, those were the references he was making. Um, we found out it was based off of nothing. And I've always, and maybe because I was close to it and I covered the trial here, but the fact that he's never acknowledged to this day that he was wrong, and I can tell you he destroyed the Pagonises, he's destroyed other people's lives as well in this case here, that there was no contrition after the fact by him. Um, it has always been for me a major uh, a debit uh, when it came to his, um, his reputation. I know some people, at least from a generation, still haven't forgotten, but I know a lot of people haven't. But uh, it's amazing how long the story carried for yeah, it, it, it is. It, it's had legs into the 25 years that, since it's happened. Um, yeah, he didn't apologize. I wouldn't expect him to apologize because in his mind, um, he went with what he knew and he took that as far as he could take it. Um, Listen, there, there were a there, lot of allegations of people close to him that he yeah. knew the story was like, but this was a national launch, launching point for him. I, you know what? I, I will tell you, it may have been somewhat of a national launching point, although I think that actually came a little later during the Giuliani years. And I actually think, it, but it did set the stage for him to become um, the civil rights leader that he, uh, that he has been. And I actually think the focal point of it was during the uh, arrest at one police plaza. I think that was really the height of it. But this, it, this, in terms of this particular story and the two lawyers mm -hmm. that you mentioned, I think were disbarred. 
um, yep. as a result of it. Yep. So people around him did pay a huge price for it, and his credibility had suffered. But he's he is the master at um, sort of rebranding and reshaping, and he's done that. But as you way. said, Dom, it was dangerous times and dangerous rhetoric around this, with serious stuff that was going mm -hmm. on at the time mm -hmm. here, um, <coughs> and you could feel some of the tensions that, that this was uh, this was elevated. I, I really felt bad for State Attorney General Robert Abrams, who did mm -hmm. the report yep. concluding that Miss Brawley was lying. Uh, activists on on the on her side said that he liked doing things with little girls. I'm leaving out the yeah. word. And so I mean, they attacked this man personally. Mm -hmm. So you have Pagonis that sued. His marriage didn't make it as a result yep. of this. You had a law enforcement officer yeah. who committed suicide. Mm. Uh, and to this day, we still don't know the re the the results of, of his suicide letter. You had a lot of the, the uh, Brawley report. They refused to release it. They said it would only add s fuel and speculation. You had a lot of people's lives who were destroyed over this. Uh, growing up in Westchester, too, we heard about this. It was all front page news. But right. all those stories you talked about before about the racial uh, injustice going on back then, those were in the city. This wasn't even specifically right no, in New York City at that point. This, this, was up, this was up in Poughkeepsie, which was which basically it flew, it, it spread across New York State, opposed yep. to just being down in the city, which I recall that being one of the big issues down there. I also recall something about there was fundraisers hosted by people around Sharpton to pay off his uh, yes. his fines. Yes. Per Percy so Sutton he, made, he never admitted others. it. Yep. Percy Sutton and others paid off his fine. But now Miss Brawley is personally responsible to Mr. Right. Pagonis for, I believe, $300,000. And it's grown tremendously with interest. Yeah. And uh, ap apparently she's been served in Virginia, but she still won't comment publicly. <laughs> And, and his life the has New been York ruined. The Post actually found her in Virginia because yes, her name, right. whether she changed her name or had right. been changed by marriage, uh, they found her down there they to go do, after her. You do know one thing, in the Times um, that we saw in that setup clip, uh, they did kind of a retrospective, and there's actually this group that puts these um, things together. I think it's Retro, retro something. Report. Yeah, th Retro Reports. Thank you, Mark. Um, you realize the tension was back then, and yep. with all the negative the city has come a long way for a lot of different reasons well, but and it's not just manhattan it's even the outer boroughs too it has gotten uh, a lot better but it then leads to the question that we're going to talk about right after the break about how far we've really come and, and it raises for me at least an interesting co uh, question it all comes out of a commercial a cheerios commercial for crying out loud that has gotten some comments on social media that have raised issues as well stay with us we'll be right back with more on that 